Lord Kantaka, welcome to Lord's Test Match against England. Got the pavilion behind you. Had your team photo a moment ago in the whites. This must feel magnificent. Yeah, it is. It's something I played a small part in 2019. I didn't get onto the pitch, luckily, luckily unluckily, whatever way you look at it. Um, but now to be back again four years later, I think it's something we're all I think thrilled to be a part of. It's really exciting. We've spoken to a lot of your teammates who were there that day, but you had an unusual experience of being in the dressing room, not being in the middle. Your, your memories of watching Timmy Murta run amok that day. Yeah, I, to be honest, I, the, the main thing I take from that whole game was the weather. I remember it being so hot and stuff, but really exciting. I think what we did that day was really special. I think we made a statement um, and really put our, for, our foot forward. Uh, it's really exciting, I think, thing to do at Lords with such a such a strong home crowd. And I think it'll be something we're looking to replicate this week. Uh, nice to come into a test like this in good nick, making 97 on the weekend against Essex. Getting out to George Dockrell, though, one of your uh, <laughs> Irish teammates, an unusual situation there uh, with a tour game, but hitting the ball well. I, I think so, yeah. I think it's just trying to get those those little gains to take confidence from. I think a lot of our group did that, so I think everyone's in a pretty good place, but with the ball on the bat, that's a warm game after all, so it doesn't really mean that much going in. I think it's just the headspace is, is nice and healthy, I suppose. often hear a bit about it can be difficult to wicket keep at Lords for various reasons. I suppose the slope is a big part of that. Replacing, not replacing, but Gary Wilson was that golden generation wicket keeper, 2007 all the way through to the test here at Lords in 19, but that, that primary job of wicket keeping is so important this week. It is, yeah, and it's great to have Wilson in the in the coaching staff this week. I think he's there. He can advise me. I've already been out, done done half an hour on the, on, in the middle. I think something having someone who's done it before. I think it's pretty. It's always insightful, and it's the kind of stuff we're looking for. It's that experience. So obviously, it's new to me. It's going to be difficult. I think I'm expecting that, but I think it's just trying to be nice and relaxed and take confidence from previous performances. And the experience of being inside since beating in England as well. Southampton back in. Uh, at 2020 and lockdown, of course, the World Cup came at the MCG last year. Yeah. Your side believing you can beat an England 11. Yeah, I think so. I think some of the international teams we play, we never really show up and perform, which is disappointing. But I think England's one of those teams. For some reason, we seem to get it right a lot of the time and put in good performances, which is always great. And I think I think a lot of people are looking back on those previous games that we've played recently. Um, they're obviously a really good cricket team, but they're still just a cricket team. I think that's something that we're looking towards and we've always played well against them historically. So I think we'll be looking to do more of it this week. And you made runs against England at the G last year and the extent to which that sort of kick-started your tournament in a way, the only Irish player to make it to 200 runs, 71 not out against Australia, which effectively got them knocked out of that T20 World Cup at mm -hmm. Brisbane. So you have been mixing it with the best. Uh, I think, yeah, if that's it. That's how you look at it. I think it was really, it was great for me, a brilliant tournament and for our team to get through to the to the next stage. I think there's always a lot of pressure playing in those kind of preliminary rounds. Um, but it was great to be able to get those opportunities to play against those big teams and lucky enough was able to do well. It was probably the springboard for you getting into the, uh, let's call it franchise cricket over the winter, playing in the IL T20 and what you've been able to take from that and bring back to the Irish dressing room. Yeah, I think there are so many opportunities out there now for young cricketers and myself included and the other lads in the change room just watching that Josh there on, in the IPL final yesterday it's a really exciting time for Irish cricketers I think there are so many opportunities so it's been great to kind of get a taste of it and see what I can bring back see what I can what I can learn from new people because I think just with Cricket Ireland it's such a small group um, you, you hear so much of the same stuff not to say that's a bad thing but I think it's just nice to have fresh eyes on you and to get fresh eyes on something else as well. Having been in the dressing room in 19 having to wait you know, four years on from that to make your test debut, making a century. I mean, nearly 150 years of test cricket, you're one of 114 men to get a test century at the first time of asking. Only the sixth wicketkeeper, the second Irishman, of course, after Kevin O'Brien. Have you had a chance to think about how special that was? Uh, I think of the year? my dad's big on that, on the history of the game and stuff, and I think test cricket's really where that's at. I think we play so much one day, and, and T20 cricket, you can kind of lose yourself in the modern excitement of the game, but there is so much history, and all those people who've gone before you are what makes it special today, I think. So to be a part of a group like that, I think it's it's brilliant for me, I think, just to have it and it'll be with me for both the rest of my career and the rest of my life. A teammate in, in Kevin O'Brien who did it at the first time of asking as well. I'm sure you've you've shared that uh, shared that connection together. Yeah, I've seen Kevin around recently since we got back from that tour and it, it's it's nice to have someone else who's done it with you, I think, just to be part of that little group. And it's not like it was a one-off either, making 80 at Gaul against Sri Lanka in, in conditions. I know it was a, a flattish surface there, but having the, the patience to bat for that length of time, uh, that must fill you with confidence coming into a game like this. Yeah, I think so. I don't know if some of the lads would call me the most patient batter going around, but it's, it's a nice way to be described. Um, I think feeling good about the cricket at the moment and the way things are going. And I think as a test team, we've put in some good performances. There are things still to work on, but I think we're finding our feet and hopefully figuring things out as they go. You touched on your dad. You've got that rich history there at the, the Pembroke Cricket Club. He was uh, a big part of your, your upbringing there, growing mm -hmm. up uh, in those dressing rooms uh, and what that will mean for your broader family here, uh, walking out through the famous Lord's Gates on Yeah, on I think it's morning. really special. I'm a member in the MCC as well and a lot of the Pembroke members will be over this week. 
I think there's something special about this, just being the home of cricket, having everyone here. It's a big week for the match itself, but it's also a big week as kind of a celebration of Irish cricket and, and the English cricket that's here. Um, so, yeah, I think it's just it's going to be brilliant. We're really looking forward to it. Can't wait to see you strutting your stuff uh, here at Lords through the course of the week. Lorcan Saka, good luck. Thank you, Adam. Appreciate it. <laughs>